here are some common values that we might, that we should be able to figure out arc sines of. And let me start by drawing my unit circle. So there's negative pi over 2 and 0 and pi over 2. Remember, our answer is always going to be in that range. And so let me find, just graph those common values and see what angles they correspond to. So I'll make a little chart here, x and arc sine x. So we got negative 1, negative root 3 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1. So remember, sine x, sine is the y coordinate. So I'm looking for an angle that has a y coordinate of negative 1 to start with. So I want to find a y, an angle that has y coordinate down there at negative 1, and that's clearly negative pi over 2. So that's the answer. Negative root 3 over 2, that's an angle down there. So the angle that has sine of negative root 3 over 2 must be negative pi over 3. Negative root 2 over 2, that's the one right there, so that's negative pi over 4. Negative 1 half, the y coordinate negative 1 half is right there, that's negative pi over 3. And arc sine of 0, what angle has sine 0? Well, it's 0. What angle has sine of 1 half? Well, what angle has vertical y coordinate 1 half? That's pi over 3. Root 2 over 2, that's our 45 degree angle, also known as pi over 4. And root 3 over 3, that's our 60 degree angle, also known as pi over 3. And finally, we know that the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so the arc sine of 1 is pi over 2. So, in each case, it's a matter of looking at the value and thinking, okay, if that's my y coordinate, where am I on the unit circle? What angle between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 has sine equal to that value? And of course, if you know your values of sine very well, then it's not too hard to figure out the arc sine function. So you really don't need to memorize these. You just need to know your common values for sine x very well and to know when they're positive or negative, and then you can figure out the values for arc sine x.